Okay, so in this clip, we're going to get started with creating the material for our watch band leather stitching. Okay, so let's go ahead and hide our background and we're going to view our watch band layer here. And let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so on this band, so the inside here is going to be leather and then we have these leather stitching and then the outside border here is going to be rubber. Okay, so let's go ahead and select our stitching here. Okay, and with those selected, let's go ahead and right click, assign new material. We want Arnold AI standard. Okay. And let's go ahead and open up our hypershade. Okay. So let's go ahead and reselect our AI standard here. Rename this to leather stitches underscore AI. Okay. And now let's go ahead and set our diffuse color here. And let's go with 77. We're going to do that all the way down here for all three channels. So it'll give us this nice darker gray. Now we do want it to be a little brighter than that. Okay, so we're going to change our weight. Remember, if we want the color to be brighter, we need to move it up towards 1. Okay, so we're actually going to go with a value of 0.974. Okay, so I think that looks good. Let's move on down to the specular color. And for this one, let's go with 69 all the way down. Okay, and the weight, we're going to go with 0.439. And we do want this to be pretty rough. Now this is going to be a, a string material, something more of like a rope material. Okay, so it's going to be pretty rough. We want this at 0 0.703. Okay, of course we want Fresnel always checked on. And our reflectance at normal is going to be pretty low. So we want 0 0.05 for that one. Okay, now what is a little bit different with this one is how we're going to do the bump. Normally you would just plug the bump node right into the shader, but I find that using the Arnold 2D bump node gives us better results. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's graph our leather stitches here. So right click on it and graph network. So now we can see that here. And let's select with Arnold selected. Let's make this a little bigger here for we can see. We're going to scroll down to we see, until we see AI Bump 2D. So let's select that node. Okay, so in this node we have very simple attributes here. So we have the bump map value where we're going to plug in our bump map. We have our bump height and then shader. So how this works is we are going to take our shading group here and right here we have our surface material which is our leather shader okay we're actually going to take this 2d bump middle click drag it up to the surface material and drop it in there okay now remember our bump had a place for a shader that's where we're going to plug in our leather stitches shader okay so now these three are all tied in together now let's go ahead and click on the checker to plug in our bump map. And the bump map has already been created and is in your project files folder. Okay, so let's open that up okay, and bring it on the window here for you or on the screen. And we're going to choose the watch band stitches underscore bump. Okay. Now these are the only two maps that uh, were pre-created. Everything else we're going to do in Photoshop. So we're going to click open. Okay, now we need to set the color space to our scene linear rec 709 slash sRGB. Okay, and this is going to keep everything linearized for us as we save out our final render. We're going to save it out as an EXR, and then that way everything will uh, be color correct for us. Okay, and we need to check alpha is luminance for our bump. Okay, and now let's go back to our AI bump 2D node and we need to set the bump height. Let me just bring this down a little bit more so we can see what we're doing. 
And just side note, I really love the material viewer here in Maya 2017 now with Arnold. I love that I can either just click on a shader ball and be able to see what's going on with my shader and then individually select my 2D textures or my bumps and be able to see them in real time as well. Okay, so we're going to set this to 0.08. Okay, so now we can see these individual strands of string that are tied together here. Now, we're not going to get super close to our stitching. If we were, we would have uh, great results either way. But this will give us an effect and make the stitches not look as smooth as they normally we would be without a bump on it. Okay, and if you do want to get closer for some nice close-up shots, then we already have the proper bump map applied to those stitches that would add that realism for your shot. Okay, but even at the distance that we're going to be at, we're going to notice a difference between having this bump and not having it. All right, so now since we've added this 2D bump into our shading group, and the shading group is already assigned to our stitches, the bump shader is already applied. Okay. Now sometimes it doesn't do it. I've noticed sometimes there's a glitch where it'll just keep the original shader applied to it and not add the bump shader node to it. But if that's ever the case, you can just right click on your shader here and with your stitches selected, just assign it to the material. So just to verify that that did work properly, I am going to take our AI 2D bump node here right click on it and select objects with material and as we see it did select our stitches so we know that that did apply appropriately okay so the next thing we're going to do since we have a little time in this clip let's go ahead and create the red paint that we're going to use on our dial that is going to point to the minutes on our watch okay so let's go ahead and click on these little stars here. That is going to clear out the nodes. And we can start off with a clean slate. Let's go ahead and go to Arnold. Make this a little bigger here so we can see what we're doing. And let's collect, or let's select the AI standard. And we are going to name this red paint. Okay. And let's go ahead and make our diffuse color. Just the standard right up here, so 255. For our pure red and the diffuse color we want this to be pretty bright so let's go 0.944 okay and this is going to be shiny and new so we're not going to use the roughness and then for the specular let's go with our specular color at 66 we're going to do that all the way down okay and the weight let's go with 0.776 okay roughness we're going to bring down quite a bit but we're still going to have some blurred reflection on there and it's going to be such a small detail that at the distance we're viewing we're not going to notice a whole lot but it'll still be there again if you ever wanted some close-up shots of individual details on the watch so we have let's go 0.77 or I'm sorry, 0.196. That was our rough or our weight. There we go. And we do want Fresno, of course. Reflectance at normal. Let's set to something like 0.2. All right, so it's a shiny new paint job. Okay. And that's it for our red paint. So in the next clip, let's go ahead and build out our rubber that we're going to use. And we're actually going to use a procedural bump map for that one. Okay, so we'll see you in the next clip.